In CRPS, if your accuracy is worse than 75%, you can be confident that that's an abnormal accuracy. The difference between sides has to be 12% to be sure that there really is a difference between sides. This is for CRPS. Not many people see us CRPS, so let's go to neck pain. If on the neck pain task, their accuracy is less than 80%, that's our trigger for saying that's abnormal. And again, why do you want to know? Well, in, in part to be able to explain, here's a situation going on that's about your brain's control of your body. It's not about the body part because we don't do anything with the body part. It's a nice educational trigger, but also it leads to targeted treatment because we, we can improve that situation by improving this performance. Which, and, and what I think we're doing there is we're changing the relative influence of neurotags. If you conclude there's a difference between sides and necks, you need to see 6%, so that's, that's not a very big difference to suggest that they're, they're performing better turning one way or the other. Low back pain, less than 80%, so that less than 80% is coming out as a general rule and a difference between sides of 10% inaccuracy. Knee OA and phantom limb pain, again, 75%. So your general rule could be if accuracy on this task is less than 80%, that's abnormal. That could be a general rule if you're not fussy about stuff. So this is my attempt at a quasi uh, clinical treatment rule or, or clinical reasoning tool. I'm slightly nervous about it, but let's say you do the left-right judgment task and you see that the affected limb uh, is no different to the healthy limb on your criteria, but they are both worse than 80%. What does this mean? I think it could mean that they're just hopeless at this task. They're just duds. They're in the back end of the bell curve. Uh, if that's the case, and you're testing hands, for example, just test another body part and see how they perform there. If they're still crap at it, on the left hand one, accuracy less than 80%, then I would conclude, this is built for CRPS data, but I would, I would conclude that's not a, a clinically significant finding for that individual. If on the other body parts they're performing really well, then it will conclude it is clinically significant and in CRPS, this is where you see it, we might start to wonder if there are pre-symptomatic changes on the healthy side and you might remember from Mark Hutchinson talking about the spinal cord mediated glial mirror pain thing. And what we now know in CRPS is that preclinical changes come out in the brain before they come out in tactile sensitivity or pain. So we can have pre-pain findings uh, on the opposite limb in CRPS. Uh, happens sometimes. The affected uh, is uh, less like, accurate than the healthy by 15%, then I will conclude the body maps, the neurotags that represent this body part are not as precise as they could be. I'd then want to know about other assessments. So I'd be very interested in the perceived size of the body part, whether they feel it well. I'd be interested in two-point discrimination threshold. So this, this finding would be a trigger to do these assessments. Uh, and if the picture fits, then I would be interested in doing graded motor imagery and maybe some sort of visual manipulation to recruit the precise nature of vision in improving these imprecise neurotags. What happens if the healthy is less accurate than the affected by 15%? Got no idea how to interpret that. <laughs> and I just, if that happens, just write it down and observe carefully what else you can see and you might discover something interesting worth investigating or it might have just been a stuff up on the day. So uh, people with dyslexia find the left-right judgment task really difficult and their data are impossible to interpret. But the dyslexia thing we understand is, uh, is because when you do the task, you find the word for left as you hit the button. So your response has to find, it's a word selection task in the process. So people, people with dyslexia find it very difficult unless we change the task and it's not practical to do that on a mass scale. So. What about reaction time? So reaction time is a different issue and most of our data in, in left-right judgments look at reaction time data. This is a picture out of the Graded Motor Imagery Handbook. I'm, I'm sure there would be uh, copies of this out there, but these are the scenarios that can happen. Uh, on the top uh, picture here, this is someone with a, a left hand. They've got an acute left hand injury and they're doing a left-right judgment task and they are looking at a picture of a right hand. So just work out what that is. You've got a sore, painful left hand, and if, if this was in an experiment that we'd done, we might have just injected your hand with salty water, and that's hurting, and you're doing the task. 
and you see in front of you a picture of a right hand and you have to judge whether it's a left or a right hand and, this, and it's an ambiguous picture. This is a difficult decision, so this is the second circle across. It's safest at the moment, because this is difficult, to quickly presume that the hand I see is a left hand because I've, uh, the influence of the neurotags of my left hand is high at the moment because you're hurting because you've got nociceptive input and you might be producing pain as well. So you just check to see if that's correct. So you mentally move your left hand to match the picture, but you realise when you do that, now none of this is conscious, right? None of this is conscious. But you realise when you do that, that doesn't fit. That's not right. So you go back to the start, you do it again. Oh, it does fit, which means your accuracy is good on both sides. You got it right, but you have a delay for pictures of the right hand because you've got this risk for ambiguous pictures of making the wrong decision first and when you check it you realise and then you make the right decision. Is that okay? That's how we interpret reaction time discrepancies in this task. Down the bottom we have acute left hand pain looking at a left hand and uh, you quickly get to the right response which explains this difference here. Chronic is a different situation and it's quite an intriguing situation that uh, you might have chronic left hand pain and let's say you've got a chronic left handed CRPS. Again, this is a difficult decision, but it's best or safest to presume it's my right hand. This is how we interpret this, that the bias, and we're giving agency to this decision that I, I now, if, if we do a second edition, I think we should change the wording of this to say the neurotags that represent the right hand are the more influential ones now. So there's an ambiguous thing here and the neurotags for the right healthy hand that you've been using well for the last 18 months are highly influential, so you select that, you mentally move your right hand and you're correct, but now when you see a, a left hand, you make the mistake. So now you are delayed on your left hand, and this is what we see on CRPS, and with all those other body parts, we see the delay, it's, it's, I mean, the, the, the most obvious and clinically utilizable condition is CRPS or phantom limb pain, we see a serious delay for pictures of that side of that limb. What we also now in a paper, paper we just published this year in Annals of Neurology show that if the picture of a limb is on the, on the affected side of the monitor, you have a delay, regardless of what that limb is, even if it's not a hand. But that delay is so small you can't detect it in an individual patient. But what it tells us is this is that the neurotags of the affected hand are less influential and the neurotags of the affected space are less influential in producing experience. So here's a potential uh, treatment pathway. You, you see that the affected hand is similar to the healthy hand and is taking longer than 2.5 seconds. My interpretation here would be they're probably just a dud at this task. Uh, maybe they have dyslexia, might be their general ability and we can then test another body part and either we'll find they're still hopeless and we don't know how to interpret it, we have to do some more tests, or they're good at the other body part and I would say something, I don't know what, but something is driving a delay that's not about relative side to side differences. And it might be related to fear of movement, fear of tasks, distraction. As soon as we're doing anything with arms, well, my brain is consumed with other thoughts, those sorts of things. It's hard to interpret that and we don't see that very often in CRPS. If the affected hand is taking longer than the healthy hand, then I would start to say that would tell me that there is greater influence of the healthy hand's neurotags. So we've got this quasi neglect and this would be my trigger to doing graded motor imagery and I would test if I can this midline bias thing. But that takes a lot of time clinically and probably won't change your management at all. What if the healthy takes longer than the affected? Well, I don't really know how to interpret this. We don't see this very often, but it, it might make me start to think about more overt hypervigilance to tasks that involve, that should involve that hand.